Good evening. Welcome to another installment of Real Chip TV where we're talking Eagles. This week, Weekly Chirp. It's our second episode. Here, Tom Oresco, founder of Chip God blog, and a new timer, Kyle Dudek. Thanks for joining the show. Kyle, tell us something about yourself. My name's Kyle Dudek. I'm a Temple grad with a marketing degree, and I'm ready to uh, talk Eagles football with you guys. Yeah. So, big news this week. Des Bryant signing his contract five years 70 million Tom, do you think it's uh, justified think he deserved it i do think so i think he's one of the best players in the nfl uh let alone on the cowboys probably their best player now that marcus here with the eagles um and yeah i do think he deserved it i was you know hoping hoping it would draw out a little longer maybe create some type of a camp distraction but you know he, he got what he deserved there. kind of reminds me of t.o a lot <laughs> a lot like t.o yeah he's always over yeah uh, he said uh very humble of him he said uh now the Cowboys are Super Bowl contenders because he signed the contract. <laughs> Gotta disagree there, but uh, as do I. <laughs> I think they lost uh, key pieces in the market there. That's really hurt them. Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's just happy he got his money. The Giants, on the other hand, <laughs> pun intended. Um, Jason Pierre-Paul lost his right index finger. So, just trying to picture that. That's. That's awkward. At the line, like you're not. I, I mean, it's definitely going to impact this play. Sal Powell says he could be out. The recovery is just till November. What do you think? What does this do for the Giants' defense or lack thereof? Kyle? Uh, well, you know, I think it definitely puts a big hindrance on their defense. While you know his career has kind of been up and down. You know, he had an outstanding rookie career, then he kind of fell off a little bit. And then last year, he really you know made a comeback. But you know, just think about it. Losing this finger here when he's going up against the line, he's not going to be able to put his whole palm on the guy. And plus. Getting used to his new, uh, his right. new yeah, hand is, is going to be is, is going to take time. It's going to be a learning curve for him. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I saw stories just like googling images and stuff like that. I mean, there was stuff about compare drawing comparisons to like Star Wars, like a, like a mechanical hand. Like it's just yeah. I just don't see how he could possibly be this this the same the same player. I mean, I can't imagine playing. And what a bonehead thing to do, <laughs> light a firework. I mean, come on. Yeah, you got. I mean, when you're making that much money, yeah, yeah, people for that. Probably, you got people yeah. for everything. The Gi- now the Giants rescinded that offer that they had. Yeah, you know, offered him a big deal, and he didn't sign it. He was reluctant to sign, and he wanted more, and now he's getting nuts. Yeah, so. not, not even that. Put the firework on the ground. Don't hold it in your hand and light it off. Like. <laughs> yeah, kids, be safe. Don't play. Don't play with fireworks. Um, I mean, I guess if we want to talk the other teams, Sean Jackson has a new reality TV show. No one cares. Yeah. Um, so. On. <laughs> Everyone else, all the other teams making headlines for the wrong reasons. The Eagles, though, we made good headlines this offseason. Last week we talked about the offense, Sam Bradford, you know, getting new, getting new guys on offense. Now we're going to talk the defense, and the biggest thing really, Byron Maxwell. We got Byron Maxwell. What, what do you think about this, Tom? What does this do for us? I love the guy's intensity that he's brought to the team, the tenacity and the swagger, the championship background, and it really all starts, you know, with a thought. And when he said that he thinks this team could be a Super Bowl contender, I mean, that's, you know, that the young guys like Jordan Matthews and, you know, the young guys on offense see that and they say, like, hey, man, now we have this guy backing us. Our offense was, you know, top five in the NFL in two years in a row, and now we have this guy on defense is going to lead our team. And I think um, I think he's going to do a really, really good – to make really good improvement for our, for our secondary. I completely agree. And I just want to add in that, you know, him coming from a Super Bowl background, like Tom mentioned, and, you know, and he also wants to get out of the Richard Sherman shadow and prove that he wasn't just being a product of the good Seattle defense. You know, this shows he's actually as good as he's made out to be. So. Yeah, I think he definitely has, you know, I definitely feel like he has something to prove, and he's going to be just a great leader for, for, for the guys on defense. Um, also, we uh, you know, we traded LaShawn McCoy, got Kiko Alonso. So we got some depth at linebacker. You know, last year with, I felt like once D'Amico Ryans went out, like we, like, you know, putting in Casey Matthews and really having, you know, not, not, like once he was gone, it felt like, you know, it's just the linebacker situation got real, like really bad. So what do you think, what do you see as like, how do you see Kiko Alonso factoring into the uh, well, equation? Well, like you said, first of all, having depth at any position is, definitely a bonus, you know, because you, you never know when an injury is going to occur, which, you know, we hope that doesn't happen, but, you know, uh, Kiko Alonso, his rookie year, you know, 
150 some tackles from defensive rookie of the year. You know, has great promise, great potential. So, you know, he's definitely going to have a different dynamic for this defense. Dude, his kind of stats from that, from that one season. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, we get Byron Max, though, but the secondary as a whole. It cannot be worse than last year. Bradley Fletcher <laughs> and Kerry Williams are gone. I don't. I don't care. I don't care how poorly they play. They cannot be as bad as last year. Who do you see like lining up? You know, with Byron Maxwell and Malcolm Jenkins. I mean, those are your two. You two know, your two pieces. Two key pieces in the secondary. I see a, a pleasant surprise in camp was Walter Thurmond. He's a cornerback that we mm -hmm. signed, and he's supposed to start at safety. Uh, the coaching staff approached him about it and asked him where would he rather play, and there's a lot of cornerbacks right now buying for playing time. So saw an opportunity, he took it, and apparently, you know, Maxwell and um, Jenkins and everybody saying that he's standing out getting his hands on the ball a lot. The coaching yeah. staff really likes how he's played, so I think he's, you know, his ability to cover and coming from that cornerback background is going to help him in this defense transition into that spot and uh, Eric Rowe is a guy that directed in the second round is physically one of the best athletes on the team um, and I think that he's going to ultimately win the job over Nolan Carroll and over Brandon Boykin to get that outside starting spot uh, right beside Byron Maxwell. Yeah um, no I think I mean it just <laughs> It really just can't be any worse than last year. Like it really doesn't matter how poor they like, play. I mean, it really is not. I, I mean, say there's not that much pressure. You have 70 pass plays of over 20 yards. I don't think it can really get much worse than that. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, it can't. So right now we're gonna roll to the clip of the week. Clip of the week this week is Nelson Aguilar just killing it. We're gonna go to right now this deep bomb right here. That <laughs> he's so fast. He's so <laughs> fast. What do you? What about that deep bomb? I mean, he just he just went by everyone. I mean, on the play action by the USC, they drew it up perfectly, and, and the guy gets the separation. I mean, you're looking at you know our new Jeremy Matler, and Deshaun Jackson type dynamic player. I mean, Jordan Matthews can run, but Nelson has a different. Uh, he's got a, just a whole different dynamic in his speed getting downfield, and I think Bradford's play action pass is one of his biggest weapons for an accurate quarterback and Sanchez as well. A play action is quarterback's best friend when you commit to that run and and then guys like Nelson Aguilar and um, you know speed speedsters can really get down the field and take advantage of that and I think that's gonna be huge in this offense. Yeah and then the um the punt there, I mean I guess I mean you're gonna have run back kicks, you know, alongside there and scrolls I mean what right. what you like about that punt besides the touchdown? I mean well, <laughs> obviously the touchdown is great, but you know I you know, kind of comparing him to Deshaun Jackson a little bit, I, I think he sees the lanes better than Deshaun Jackson. I, I don't think he's quite as fast, but, you know, he sees the lanes better. He anticipates where the holes are going to open up, and that's really what you need in a punt return. Especially smart player. Yeah, player. yeah. Just a smart guy. player. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we were, we were number one in special teams last year, and we might have gotten better. I mean, Chip went out and signed you new know, guys' names, Brad Jones and Chris Krasinski. Those are not household names, but these are guys that were special teams you know, stars, yeah. and you know you don't hear about you don't hear that term ever. But these guys were studs, and where they came from, Brad Jones coming from Green Bay. What do you think this this does for us? Just in this, you know, improving you know the return game defensively and offensively. Field position's huge, and anytime you can get a unit on the field, um, another guy you didn't mention was Sehi Ajir Tutu from the San Diego Chargers. He was their uh, two-time back-to-back years in the last two years, uh, special teams player of the team um, for them. So he, he and he led the he led the league last year in special teams tackles. So I mean, you gotta you gotta tip your hat to the um, the attention to detail that Chip Kelly has for special teams. And, I mean, obviously, you're just competing against yourself at this point. You're number one. You can't get any better than number one, but you yeah. can get better than you were last year, and it would be astounding if they could do that because they were excellent on special Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think 2013, they were so bad that they, they were... 2012, they were, they were bad. 2013 was Chip's first year. He had I remember... They were okay. Yeah, but I, I remember the squib kicks in the uh, playoff yeah. games against the Saints uh, where they were like, or you're just like, oh man, if, if, they, if we stop them at the 35, yeah, like that's, yeah, that's a like, win. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, just, I just remember that game so vividly yeah. being there that yeah. it was just, it was just real, so painful oh, yeah. to watch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to close it out with a segment I like to call Chip Dips. And I'm going to ask these guys each three questions. 
They have no idea. We prepared them, prepared them a while ago. They have no idea what they're going to be. So we're going to start with Tom. While we're on special teams, are over or under five touchdowns in special teams this year? I'm going to say under, but it's going to be four. four. I'm going to say we return a couple kicks and probably it could be five. I mean, we block a lot of touch punch for touch. We block a couple punch for touchdowns. So. It's up and I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to produce. And I, four or five is probably the range that I'd say. Hopefully, one against the Cowboys. Yes. Maybe two. All right. <laughs> um, don't want to use them all in one shot, though. Kyle, do that. Kyle, Nelson Aguilar, over or under 1,200 receiving yards? I'm going to go with slightly under, just because of, you know, what Jordan Matthews did last year as our number two receiver. Uh, you know, it, it is a little bit under that, but... Um, you know, especially being the number two receiver, you're not going to receive all the targets from Jordan Matthews stepping up to be the number one. But I do think he will have a solid year. Yeah. I'm going to say go with around, you know, a little over a thousand yeah. and seven or eight touchdowns. Okay. December 13th, LaShawn McCoy returns to Philly. Who has more rushing yards, DeMarco Murray or LaShawn McCoy? DeMarco Murray has more rushing yards, and I'm talking at least 80 more. 80 more. At least 80 more. At least 80 more. All right. I like it. So. Tom commented on this earlier. Who yeah, about the cornerback situation? Kyle, who do you think the other starting cornerback is going to be alongside Byron Maxwell? I'm going to have to agree with Tom here. I, I think Eric Rowe, especially, you know, you draft a guy in the second round, you know, you draft him that early. Trade up to get him. Yeah, and, and also trade up to get him. You know, you, you draft a guy that high, you ultimately want him to start. I mean, unless you really you feel that he's really not ready. But, you know, I just don't think that Brandon, Brandon Boykin is a little too small. You know, Chip likes the bigger physical corners. Mm -hmm. Brandon Boykin being like 5'9. And Nolan Carroll's good size too, but I, I think well, Eric is ultimately going to be in for that position. Tom, this one's for you. Your, your number one and number two wide receiver, who are they going to be on the depth chart? I'm going to say Jordan Matthews and Nelson Aguilar. Um, maybe to start the season, Riley Cooper gets some more reps, but as the season will go on, those two will emerge. They're already, you know, forming a brother brotherly type um, connection in camp, they say, and it's only going to grow, and they really push each other. And, um, I think they're they're going to be really, really just very important for us going forward. Next, not not just this year, but the next ten years. Those these kids are going to be you know, yeah. growing in the man in front of our eyes. Yeah, uh, uh, it's going to be a very exciting thing to watch. Last question, Kyle. Jason Pierre-Paul, love one of his fingers on his hand, his, his index finger. If you had to lose <laughs> one thing, one of your fingers on either hand, what would it be, and why? I would say my pinky, just because I think it would be the least important. Hmm. See, I wonder what ring on the non the non wedding band. Yeah. I wonder what I mean. I wonder what ring. I feel like the pinky, I use it for stuff. Yeah, you know? the pinky's your end grip. I broke my pinky, and it's it's bad. I'm telling you, you can't grip anything. It's tough. So yeah, I think I, I can get I by. I think I can get by without this one. Yeah, I don't want it. I want to keep it, but I think I can I get by. Keep all my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep them all, but let's, let's if we it. had to lose on, I'm just saying, what what would yours be? Just while you're at it. I'd probably have to agree with you. I mean, I've had injuries to this thumb, this pinky, so I'll. I'll take this one and get it out of there. All right, so we're, okay, so we're saying ring, you're saying pinky. Okay, <laughs> well that's gonna wrap it. That's gonna wrap it up for this for this week's edition of the weekly chirp. Join us, join us next week.